Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, people here online know that it's my belief that one, Carl Frotch would have a hard time with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right? The question with Chavez Jr. isn't an ability to fight inside. He can. Right? And he has the size, quite frankly, to make it a problem, an issue for Carl Frotch. Right? The issue with Jr. is who's training him and is he ready to fight? Right, he's been out of the ring for a while now. It looks like he's split with Freddie Roach. Uh, uncertainty involving a fighter's camp impacts betting odds. Right, it should cause concern for gamblers. Right, the other issue with Chavez Jr. is we've had Freddie Roach in interview after interview say that Chavez Jr. barely trained to fight Sergio Martinez in a unification match at middleweight, right? If that's true, then that's as troubling as it gets because understand at the time Chavez Jr. was unbeaten officially. The fight was a high profile fight taking place in Vegas and if you can't get motivated to defend your title and your unbeaten streak in a high profile fight, then when can you get motivated? Right? But, based on styles, I do question what happens if Carl Frotch finds himself against a guy who can smother him, get inside his jab, and literally start working over his body. I think that Carl Frotch Chavez Jr. fight would be a great fight, assuming Jr. comes in motivated. Right? People here online also know that I believe the Carl Frotch James the Gale fight would be a victory lap for James DeGale. In my opinion, James DeGale is one of the most dangerous men in boxing. Right? DeGale's a southpaw. DeGale is really the worst possible matchup for Carl Frotch. Right? He's a southpaw who Carl will have a problem landing his jab against. And DeGale, quite frankly, is a better boxer than Carl Frotch, right? Carl Frotch throws wide-angle punches, except for that laser-like jab, right? DeGale is a guy who can alter the angles. DeGale throws punches at whatever angles he wants, right? And I think DeGale is a much tougher matchup for Frotch than, let's say, a Mikael Kessler, right? Well, this morning I read where light heavyweight champion Jurgen Bramer wants to fight Carl Frotch. Let me just say, put Bramer down as also one of the toughest possible opponents for Carl Frotch. Right? Bramer liked the Gale as a southpaw. Bramer liked the Gale as a deconstructionist. In other words, Bramer is a master chess player. He's not going to move around the ring a lot. He's going to stand in front of you and he's going to dissect you. He throws the shorter punches than Carl Frotch. Right? I believe he'll be able to dodge Frotch's jab. I think Frotch would look wooden against Bramer. In other words, <clears throat> in a world with other fighters, right? And let me name three guys I think would be easier matchups for Carl Frotch, right? Janady Golovkin, highly regarded. I think he's an easier matchup for Frotch than either DeGale or Bramer, right? Sergei Kovalev. I think Kovalev is an easier matchup for Frotch than DeGale or Bramer, right? Bernard Hopkins. <clears throat> I think Hopkins is an easier matchup for Frotch than DeGale or Bramer, right? Don't be fooled by the titles, right? Don't be fooled by the hype. Understand, against slick southpaws, 
right, who are deconstructionists. They can stand in front of you and deconstruct you who start the match on second base because they will have already neutralized Frotch's jab, right? You don't have fights where Bramer has been bludgeoned by a righty's jab. You don't have fights where DeGale has been bludgeoned by a righty's jab, right? I'll agree. George Groves found a home for his jab against DeGale, right? But DeGale wasn't bludgeoned by it. He wasn't beaten up by it. And Groves moved in a way that Carl Frotch can't on his best day, right? Groves has legs. Carl Frotch doesn't have that level of ring movement, right? So, with Bramer, where it gets interesting is Bramer is willing to drop down to fight Gro uh, Frotch at 168 pounds. Be careful there. That's the uncertainty in the play, right? Because as Chad Dawson found out, when he dropped down to fight Andre Ward, right? When a fighter moves out of his weight class, particularly when he's over 27, right? And Bramer's in his 30s, right? Bramer's 35. And when that fighter decides to drop down from 175 to 168, weird things can happen, especially against an opponent with great stamina, like Carl Frotch. Understand, Carl Frotch is a guy who, you know, has closed fights well. Look at the Jermaine Taylor fight, right? Look at his fight against Brian McGee, which was a war of attrition many years ago. Look at both fights against Mikael Kessler, right? Carl Frotch is stout in the late rounds. If Bramer foolishly drops to 168, right, that's when you would expect a 35-year-old who's fighting at an artificially reduced rate to wane, right, in those later rounds. Look at what happened to Chris Bird when he dropped down, right? But if Bramer fights Frotch at 175, then I think it's a mismatch. I think Bramer not only defends his title, but would probably have a shot at stopping Carl Frotch. Understand, I know Bramer has had issues outside of the ring, right? I'm not saying Bramer is the most disciplined guy. But understand, life's not just about discipline. It's also about talented. Uh, it's also about talent, and he's immensely talented, right? I think Bramer beats Frotch at 175. I think a fight between the two of them at 168 that's a close call. I'd probably still lean toward Bramer, but that carries much more risk. I think the Gale beats Frotch at 168 pounds. I think the Gale moves better than Bramer. I think that the Gale Bramer match would be the sport at the highest level, right? Because both of these guys are master chess players, right? If I'm Carl Frotch, and I'm looking at the lay of the land. And I'm looking at my bank account. Understand, Frotch is very wealthy. He just made a financial coup in the rematch against George Groves. If I'm Frotch, I'm, I'd be choosy. I would pick my spots. The boxing public, in my opinion, doesn't know either DeGale or Bramer as well as it knows Kovalev, Hopkins, or um, Golovkin, right? So if I'm Frotch, I'm not even sure if I fight Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. I might wait a little bit, add my name to Golovkin's dance card, right? And then, you know, I might even retire, <clears throat> but privately let promoters know, let my promoter, Eddie Hearn, know that I'm available for the right fights, right? If he wants to remain champion, 
And if he decides to fight James DeGale, I think he risks a significant portion of his legacy. Right? Because DeGale is a countryman, and I don't think that fight would look pretty. I think DeGale would walk through him. Right? So, right? If I'm Frotch, I'd be choosy here. The guys being discussed are too dangerous. If I were to fight Bramer and I were Carl Frotch, I wouldn't fight him at 168. I'd fight him at 175, his weight division, simply because fans will understand a fighter who says, I'm giving up my belt at 168 because I need to see what I can do at 175. Right? If he were to lose that match at 175, we'd forgive him. Right? We would say, you know what? Carl Frotch is the man. He's challenging himself. He took on the light heavyweight champion at light heavyweight. Right? But if Bramer loses the weight to fight Frotch, and if the fight is in the UK and not Germany, then Frotch won't have any excuses if he loses that match. So keep an eye on the Carl Frotch story. It's one of the biggest stories in boxing, right? You have a lot of guys lining up who want a piece of him. Let me throw in some new names, too, into the mix. Anthony Durrell. I think he's too dangerous for Carl Frotch, right? Durrell just picked up a sheer of the title at 168. He's dangerous, and like the Gale, he doesn't have the big name to go with the danger. Right? The risk is too great for the reward. So, if I'm Frotch, and I know Frotch is in great shape, I know Frotch was the one doling out the damage in his last fight, not getting the damage. Right? I know he's in great shape. I know he feels he can fight for several more years. But I think he has to be smart about the handling of his career right the water is infested with young sharks the jungle is infested with young lions there are also other veteran card players there who know how to deal right with bramer right so if i'm carl frotch at this point i would review my options carefully Right? Maybe Frotch's best move is to call out the winner of Kovalev Hopkins. As I said, I believe he has a better shot against that person than he does, quite frankly, Chavez Jr., James DeGale, Jurgen Bramer, or Anthony Durrell. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.